Hello, I'm Elo from Belgium, um, founder of Squirrel. If you want to know more, just take a look at it. But what I want to try uh, to explain you is that there's a couple of very useful plugins out there uh, for Visual Studio Code. Um, I was going to do a bit more um, demos, but um, I'm going to pack it all in a couple of basic uh, things. So what have I uh, developed over the past month? Uh, two uh, kind of uh, Visual Studio Code extensions. Um, I think uh, they were already uh, mentioned a couple of times by the team. So um, there are two very handy Microsoft uh, Graph uh, things that you can use uh, for Visual Studio Code. Uh, one is the MS Graph completion, uh, which allows you uh, to use all the Microsoft Graph URLs and get all the completion for them inside Visual Studio Code. Uh, because I love to use the Graph Explorer, but sometimes I just don't know which URLs there are available or which actions and which properties are available. So I wanted to simplify a couple of things. So that's why this Visual Studio Code completion extension was created. And besides that, we also, or I also created the Microsoft Graph Essentials, um, still in preview at the moment. Actually, there's nothing uh, that's limited for not going out of preview. But what this uh, Graph Essentials uh, extension will do is it packs all the good things that are, are out there, um, but it comes with a couple of uh, handy things as well, like CSS completion for if you're using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Um, also, all the HTML um, elements are in there. What I use very often is quickly open the API documentation site or the Graph Explorer site so that I don't have to open my browser. No, it's just going to open that for me. And then a lot of uh, these very handy snippets uh, when you want to do some React um, things with the toolkit or when you use HTML or when you use uh, CSS. So let's just jump into a demo. I prepared a a lot, but now I cleaned everything. So now I started all with empty files. So what I have here is the well-known graph.microsoft.com URL. So if you have one of these um, extensions installed, if you have the essentials, then it automatically comes with the auto-completion. And if you install the auto-completion, you only get that. But what will happen is from the moment you're going to use graph.microsoft.com and you type slash, it will get the auto completion for you. So basically, you can select which parts you want to add, and then it's going to show you all the functionalities that are available. Also, what methods are available, like get and post. Um, let's say that we want to go to me, and then on the me endpoint, you will see that there's much more. So let, let's say we go for drive. And now it takes a little bit longer if there's a lot of caching going on. But if your cache doesn't have the API yet cached inside Visual Studio Code, then it will do an API call. It will receive that information and then it will cache that information. So the next time it will be much faster. So I can then say roots and so on and so on. It also supports tokens. So if we are going to go to drives, uh, or let's say drive, no, is it drives? Yeah, here. Then we can specify a key, which is the drive ID. This is also being supported by the API. So let's say that my ID is 000. And if I do slash, it will fetch the next part of it. So very handy. Um, that way you don't have to go back each and every time to the API documentation. Um, still, if you want to do it, um, you can also go via commands. And in the commands, you will get graph. There you will see open graph explorer site or open the API documentation site, one of the two most used ones. And what I'm just doing there is you opening that particular site, nothing more than that, but very easy to just open it from 
your favorite code editor. So same thing goes for the Graph Explorer site. And then it just opens that particular website. Great. So what's more, if you're using the toolkit, toolkit comes with a lot of uh, very handy um, elements, web components, uh, but these web components all come with their own properties, for instance. So we can go to the documentation site or you can install the essentials. And from the moment you install the essentials, you can do MGT and then you get all the components that are available. Uh, so let's say that we are for going for agenda. And then you also get auto completion on them. So everything is documented here. So all of this information comes from the actual documentation. So it's not something I build up. It's uh, scripted so that it uh, scrapes everything from the documentation side and it allows you to then say, okay, this is three princes. And this is working for each and every one of these components. So MGT, login, people, person, uh, person and so on. So same thing, avatar and so on. So user ID, user ID of that particular user and that person. Another thing what you can uh, expect from the plugin is if you want to do custom styling. Uh, so if you want to apply your own custom styles to the Microsoft Toolkit uh, styles um, or components, that's something you can do. Um, how? Uh, yet again, there are some uh, things for it. So if you do MGT agenda, it's, yeah, it's a code snippet. And then it will say, okay, this is the MGT uh, web components, and then you can add your own custom class and you can start styling them. But if you already used these styles, um, it, you might know that they are using CSS variables and maybe you don't know all the CSS variables out of your head. And that's where, yet again, the tool comes into place. Um, here you can, for instance, see agenda and there you will receive all the information from the agenda. So if I go to Microsoft Graph Toolkit, and maybe that's also a good URL to be adding to the, to the extension. Uh, so if we are going to agenda here and we are going to the custom CSS properties, these properties, they will be available here inside your code editor. So there's just agenda dash, and then you will see header color. Um, oh, this is the event. But yeah, basically, if I go to event and event, there we go. Uh, so all these things that you see here, uh, you will see also on the left side um, and so on. So that was actually it. Um, if you want to install these then just go to uh, visual studio uh, the marketplace and then look for my name or look for microsoft graph and then you should be able to find them so that was it um so nothing more to show as those are those are excellent, all of the uh... demos <laughs> Those are excellent extensions to show in there, Elio. Um, quick question, uh, if people have any feedback, suggestions, what, where can you point people to? Uh, is, is there anything um, open source for this or is this just you have a, a way to, to collect feedback? What, what's kind of your, uh, your mechanism for that? Oh, if you just go to the Visual Studio code to the extension, there is a link to the GitHub repository. So both of them have their own uh, GitHub repository open source. So if you want to add something, um, feel free to do so. Um, like Seth was going to add a couple of things to them. He wanted <laughs> to do post requests and also put the body of these, um, these post requests inside the plugin. I haven't seen the PR from him, so I'm still expecting that. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep bugging him about that. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, really appreciate. Yeah, so, so I've got called out there. I appreciate you sharing this. Uh, look forward to people um, taking a look at these. We did put a, a link to them into the uh, chat window on here, but we'll make sure those also get published in the uh, the show notes as well. So, 
Thank you so much, Elio. I appreciate your time and uh, showing this wonderful uh, stuff for us to be able to take a look at. Thank you. Thank you.